Welcome back to part two of our interview with two-time Olympian Jamie Nieto. I mean, you have a lot of interest outside of uh, the high jump, Matt, and, yeah. and 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 one of them is filmmaking. I mean, is, is that was that like a necessity when you knew that you was doing this professional career as an athlete, or was that more of just like a passion or something that you wanted to do? To um, definitely, it was a passion, uh, but also you know, speaking to uh, my roommate at the Olympic Games, his name was Kadivas Robinson. He was a 800 meter runner, or is a 800 meter runner, and. Um, he was like, you know, Jamie, I don't use this to get rich off this. I'm using the Olympic Games as a platform to take me to somewhere else. And, and that you can't, that's the truest statement. You know, it's like, I'm looking at it the same way as hopefully me being an Olympian will help me to get into a few more doors, get a few more interviews, you know, that I'm able to promote the other things that I want to do. Right. So, um, yeah, you know, acting has been a passion and then producing has also been a passion in mine as well now, more so because I, I find that, I'd rather create my own jobs than have to go after all these other auditions and try to get a job, you know what I mean? So I'm looking at the people like, you know, Will Smith, Tyler Perry, these people, uh, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, all these people who have major production companies, they started somewhere, you right, know, and I kind of right. want to follow that same type of a path, you know what I mean? Create right. my own jobs and my own work. Speaking yeah. of opening doors, uh, I follow your, your fan page on Facebook and the other day I see you among a whole bunch of Olympic athletes. It looked like you're on this familiar lawn. Can you tell us about where, where you just came from? Yeah, yeah. Um, the other day I went to uh, meet President Obama and um, the Vice President and Michelle uh, Obama. And uh, it was this amazing experience. It's uh, uh, one of those perks that they give to Olympians after the Olympic Games. You are able to go to the White House and meet the President. And uh, it was this amazing experience. This, this was something that I wanted to do. Ever since 2008, when I didn't make the Olympic team, I was like, you know what, if I decide to go another four years, my, one of the things is obviously to make another Olympic team, but my other reasoning, I want to meet Barack. I think that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. And so to be there and to be able to meet him and shake his hand and meet his lovely wife, and uh, that was just, you know, one of those experiences you'll, you'll cherish for a lifetime, you know? Yeah, well, well taking the politics out of sports, because I don't think it belongs in the Olympics, but mm -hmm. we definitely had... Uh, a very supportive first lady. I see Michelle Obama at a lot of events, high fiving and everything else like that. You know, how how did it feel to have, you know, not only support of your country, but of our administration also to, you know, to be out there and just support you guys and cheer for you like everybody's cheering at home. Yeah, no, that was great to know that, you know, the first lady uh, c came out there to Olympic Games and, and, and came out to support. I mean, you know, whenever you get the support from your country, that's amazing. And, and people have, have done beyond you know overwhelming uh, numbers to, to to come out and support us you know one way or another whether it's facebook twitter instagram whatever it is people have really been supporting it. and then to know that the top ranking politicians in our country are also supporting that's amazing you know yeah i couldn't ask for something better you know i, I mean i met a lot of great people out there as well another thing um i met uh, muhammad ali when mm. i was out there and actually that same time michelle was supposed to come into that uh to that meeting well it was a thing for um the torchbearer. They were naming the torch, not the torchbearer, I'm sorry, the uh, flag bearer. Mm -hmm. And so at this uh, interview, or not interview, but this little function where they named the flag bearer, Muhammad Ali came out and Michelle Obama was supposed to come out, but her, her plane got delayed, so I didn't get a chance to see her then. Luckily, I got a chance to see her now, but it was awesome to meet Muhammad, Muhammad Ali. Ali. Wow, yeah. that's, that's, that's a great athlete in person to meet, you know, in general. So, you know, so down to the numbers, you've been in two out of the last three Olympics. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there there was Felix Sanchez to win the gold this year at 35. Mm -hmm. There, as far as I know, there hasn't been a gold medalist in uh, in the high jump at the age of 38, 39, where mm -hmm. you would be in Brazil. Right. Do, are you are you still, you know, um, focused on trying to make that you know make that statement untrue and and maybe compete for for another Olympics in Brazil or or is or what, what are your plans, you know, now looking at the next four years? Well, uh, I'm thinking about competing one more year, you know, uh, after that, I don't know. I, I mean, you know, in track and field, there's a lot of ups and downs and in, you know, sport, it seems like there's a lot more downs than ups, but it's these up times that make everything worth it, you know? And so, you know, I don't want to go through another four years of a bunch of ups and downs. I'm like almost ready to start transitioning into this other career of acting is, is what I'm trying to do anyways. If I'm able to get a great acting job or, you know, my web series Blood Brothers takes off and we get some good um, producers or a network comes in and wants to make it a TV show, I'm going to do that and I mm -hmm. won't compete next year. But for the most part, 
you know, whatever happens, I'm going to look towards trying to compete one more year, and then probably the, that'll be it, you know. Okay, okay. Yeah. Tell us about Blood Brothers. Tell us about the... Oh, Blood Brothers is amazing. Um, you know, I, I wrote it in 2010. A friend of mine came to me and was like, hey, Jamie, uh, I had this dream about you and this other guy, and you guys were, you know, in, in this this real big uh, confrontation, and he just pulled a gun out on you, and, and I was like, wow, yeah, that is kind of dramatic, and, and you guys are in the car, and he's like, but the, the thing about it, he was your brother, and I was like, whoa, okay. It's even more deep. So uh, he gave me kind of the idea of how he wanted to write this little short at first. It was like five, ten minutes short. And uh, he had a new camera. He had a, just started his own production company. He was like, hey, let's go out and shoot this thing. So we went out and shot it. I wrote it out and then just kind of took off with it and just ended up writing a full, complete 120-page script and decided mm -hmm. to turn it into a web series. And um, so I was waiting for him. He edited the first uh, pilot, which is up now. Um, and then I was like, a couple years later, I'm like, hey, we still gonna do this or what? And he just, his production company is taking off. Trilogy Media is, is doing amazing. But um, his, his company started taking off, so I was like, you know what, I need to start my own company and get this thing started because I don't want this thing to sit on the shelf too much longer. And so that's what happened. Got uh, Andrew Eckblad, who's a six-time Emmy Award winner for directing and uh, editing. Uh, he got uh, John Snedden, who's the DP, who is he's been working with for the last five years and John has been in the business for the last 10-15 years plus um, and then we just started auditioning I got some other people from uh, from my acting class to help me produce and then uh, came out here to LA and started auditioning um, actors and we have a great cast you know we've got uh, Jensen Jemerson, Carla Mosley, Monica Lawson, we have some uh, Melvin um, uh, sorry Melvin, uh, Melvin Jackson Jr. who played in The Wire Okay, uh, yeah. and then uh, Jensen's great actor. Monica's been in a lot of TV shows. Carla was just in um, uh, Men in Black 3. So, you know, people who you might not know their name yet, but they're up and coming actors, great actors right now, um, before they've actually taken off. But so hopefully they will take off with Blood Brothers. But um, the, the, the story is great. It's about a, um, a young man who was in college and his mother gets sick. And so he comes home to, to, to help her out, you know. But he tells her, you know, look, I got a job at the college to kind of help out with your doctor bills and stuff. And his brother is this big time drug dealer. And so what ends up happening is he goes home and works for his, his brother and mm -hmm. finds himself getting sucked deeper and deeper into the streets. But by the end, you kind of find out things aren't really what they seem. Mm -hmm. and so there's a lot of twists and turns in there. I think uh, uh, I, want, I, I wrote it so there's kind of like a high replay value. So when you get to the end, you're like, whoa, why did that happen? So you go back and you watch some more. So. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. I'm, I'm, I think people are going to be really excited. People have seen the trailer, and um, hopefully you'll show the trailer here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going to show the trailer right here and, um, so, the, so the fans can check it out. So there's two things going on. With, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot, a lot of stuff going on, but you have you know, this, this Olympic career that's uh, definitely been you know, opening doors like the White House and everything mm -hmm. else. And, you also have an uncanny resemblance to another actor, uh, Will Smith. Has that has has anything come up from that? Has they asked you to be a, a stunt double or to play a, a twins movie with Will Smith or something like that? <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Well, you've met Will Smith. I haven't met him, so if you say I look like him, then I, I trust you. <laughs> but um, uh, you know, no, you know, a, a lady at my church asked me. She said, uh, Jamie. She asked me the same question. She was like, You could be like his stunt double, and I was like. I said, uh, well, do you know who Stunt Double is? And she was like, no, who? I was like, me either. You know, and you probably will never know who a Stunt Double is. I don't yeah, want to be Will yeah. Smith's Stunt Double. I want to be Jamie Neal. Maybe, you know, we yeah. could work together sometime type of thing, you know. So, you know, I mean, I guess it was something that was able to take off and to something else, maybe. But, you know, that I'm looking towards being my own person. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. okay. But, uh, not to take nothing from Will. Will's an amazing actor. I love all of his work. So. I mean, who do you look at in the acting world? Like, what? Who stands out as like people that you look to as far as their craft and everything? Um, right now, I've really uh, been liking a lot of what Tom Hardy is doing. I think mm -hmm. he's an amazing actor. Uh, Don Cheadle, amazing actor. Um, studied all of Denzel's films, <laughs> you know, all the ones that I can get my hands on. You know, yeah. he did a lot of TV movies that I can't find. But um, uh, shoot, there's so many amazing actors out there. You know, Sean Connery, uh, Johnny Depp, uh, Brad Pitt. You know, like. I look at all those guys. I just, I, I love film. I study film. I watch movies all the time. I just do my best to try not to ever judge a film by its cover. You know, how you look at the little DVD cover, I try to just watch it anyways. Old, new, whatever, you know. And so, uh, yeah, those are some of the people who I really look up to and I think are amazing. Okay. Well, before we go, I mean, you, you have a lot of fans out there. There's a lot of young people also watching. And you talked about the ups and downs of, you know, track, and I'm sure it also applies in life. 
what can what's one thing you could say that when times got tough and everything that helped helped you to keep on pushing on so that you you've been able to accomplish what you have so thus far um, I think, you know, just sticking in there, staying positive, keeping God first has always been my main focus, you know, through the ups and the downs. It's like I always had this urge in me to know that there's something better out there. I know I can do better. And I just kept pushing forward um, to it, you know, to that goal. And I always look back when I was young, I read Michael Jordan's book. Um, I think it was Rare Air. And he was talking about, um, or maybe I heard this quote somewhere, but uh, he was talking about how, you know, he didn't win every game. He just stuck in there and kept pursuing and kept going out after it, you know. And so, and that's kind of how I took it upon myself. It was like, if I just keep going after it, I have more of an opportunity to succeed. And I tell kids all the time, your only limitations are what you believe them to be. So believe that you can be the best. All right, Jamie Neal, tell, tell the fans where they could... You know, besides here, we're going to show the trailer right. and blah, blah, blah. Tell them where they could follow you and, and keep up with uh, your productions and, and your career. Okay, so check me out at jamienieto.com. Got a lot of interesting stuff there. Bloodbrotherswebseries.com. You can check us out there. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Google+. Plus. I'm on all that. So. <laughs> Digital man here. Digital Thank you for man. your time. Thank you so much. Thanks for representing it. the country, man, and good luck on whatever you do. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Our team is different than what it would be a college team. You know, you know, it's been a great experience just being able to play, you know, four college coaches like this. And, uh, you know, it's been fun.